Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Hello world, it's Siraj. And automatic machine learning, or AutoML, is a field that's been gaining a lot of popularity within the AI community. So I'm gonna explain how AutoML works, then compare the top AutoML frameworks to help you choose the best one for your needs. Whenever we have a data set and want to collect insights from it using machine learning, there are a whole lot of steps that we have to complete, like cleaning the data, selecting the most relevant features, choosing the right model, not cringing from Elon's awkward presentation of Neuralink, and the right configurations or hyperparameters of that model. This process can be long and expensive since it requires a lot of guessing and checking to ensure we have the best possible results. The goal of AutoML is to automate as many of these steps as possible without compromising the accuracy of our results. The more steps we can automate, the more there will be people who can actually use AI technology, not just PhDs who have the necessary mathematical and programming skill sets. The idea is to eventually drag and drop any dataset into an app and have it perform all the steps necessary until it's a fully capable prediction model that can perform whatever task we've set for it to do. But does that mean that there will someday no longer be a need for data scientists? Yeah. So. It's been real guys, see ya. You know I kid, absolutely not. I like the analogy of being a chef in the kitchen. Chefs use various machines to help automate the more repetitive parts of their work, like blending ingredients together so that they can focus on the more creative aspects of their work, like deciding what to cook, choosing the ingredients, and what the larger process looks like. In this way, AutoML tools will help free up time for data scientists so they can focus on more creative things, like how to properly frame a problem as a data science problem, how to incorporate their domain knowledge, how to interpret the results, and how to communicate those results to the rest of their team by rapid. So far, the main priority of the AutoML community has been developing techniques to automate two tasks in this pipeline, model selection and hyperparameter selection. That means finding the best performing statistical model for a given problem and the corresponding configurations without human intervention. In terms of model selection, there are lots of techniques out there, but a technique that's particularly hot right now for neural network architectures is called differentiable architecture search, or DARTS. DARTS is a game I'm not very good at. However, DARTS, the algorithm, first assumes the space of candidate architectures. The operations on the edges of the neural graph are unknown at first. It then places mixtures of the disparate operations on each edge and jointly optimizes them by mixing the probabilities of each, and the network weights are optimized by solving a gradient descent-based problem, which then gives you the final architecture from a mixture of those probabilities. The results are impressive. It's way more efficient than other neural architecture search algorithms. In terms of hyperparameter selection, this is a time-intensive task that requires a lot of trial and error on the part of a data scientist, since they basically have to guess some numbers, then wait for their model to train itself on some data, then reassess whether the results were ideal or not, then redo the process with a better educated guess as to what the ideal numbers should be. There are several techniques that are used to automate this process, but no one technique is considered the best one. Two of the most widely used techniques are grid search and random search because they're so easy to implement. Look at that. That's it. I can code that in my sleep. Both techniques frame the problem mathematically. Consider A, the space of possible strategies. Each of them simply picked several possible hyperparameters randomly, try them out, then keep the most optimal performing ones in an iterative fashion. These techniques are great for models with just a few hyperparameters, but when the search space gets bigger, meaning more configurable numbers, they can take way too long to compute. So an alternative to these strategies are for bigger models is to use meta heuristics. 
These are a class of optimization techniques based on the famous exploitation versus exploration trade-off from machine learning theory, in which an AI must decide whether to stay content by exploiting their existing resources or to find new resources by making a bet that what they will find is better than what they already have. This applies to dating as well, but I digress. There's so many possible meta heuristic techniques out there. Simulated annealing is one of them. It's inspired from the process of annealing in metallurgy that consists of alternating cooling and heating phases to minimize the material energy modifying its microstructure and physical properties. By analogy, we can explore the parameter space of our model to try to minimize the system energy, our objective function. Another technique is to use particle swarms, which sounds apocalyptic, but it's not. These use a population of candidate solutions or particles to explore the space A. Each particle moves in A depending on its current location, its best known path's position, and the whole population's best position. We can tune the trade-off between exploitation and exploration by playing with the importance of these deferring factors. Let's also not forget evolutionary algorithms inspired by biological evolution. We have a population of candidate solutions and we apply evolutionary laws to have them optimize the objective function called fitness. At each step or generation, we select the fittest individuals. The next generation is built via reproduction of these selected individuals. Reproduction is just some math operation that's defined. And I have to name one more, then we'll get to comparing frameworks. Bayesian optimization, my favorite. Shout out to my Bay squad. It encodes prior values into the model, usually based on domain knowledge. In one example, an objective function is approximated through a Gaussian process regression model. The modeling techniques provide a probability density function for the values of f based on priors. At each step, the new point to explore is selected as the maximum of a function called the activation function. This function combines prior knowledge and the uncertainty about the function in order to optimize. It's high when there is a good chance that we'll find better solutions for our optimization problem. Basically, Bayesian optimization starts by taking a point in the multidimensional space of hyperparameter configurations, gets the corresponding objective function value, and then selects a new point that minimizes the activation function. This point is used to augment our data set and becomes a historical observation to be used in future point selections. So these are some ways we can automate model selection and hyperparameter selection. There exist several auto ML frameworks to help us do that. And some of them even have the ability to automate other parts of the pipeline like data cleaning and feature engineering. So let's start with the first one on my list, MLbox. MLbox is a Python framework that performs data cleaning, hyperparameter selection, and model selection. It's already been tested on Kaggle and performs pretty well. For example, in the Two Sigma rental listing contest, it helps someone rank top 5%. I like how simple it is to install, but it isn't as compatible with Mac and Windows as it is with Linux. However, the data cleaning functionality it offers is really impressive. That's the most useful part of the library. For example, it can automatically merge several data sets into one, so definitely use it for that aspect. Another is Auto Scikit-Learn, a framework built for the popular Python machine learning tool, Scikit-Learn. It performs model selection and hyperparameter tuning. It also has feature engineering methods like one-hot encoding and uses Scikit-Learn estimators for both classification and regression problems. Once it creates a pipeline, it optimizes it using Bayesian search. It works pretty well on small and medium-sized datasets, but can't be applied to modern deep learning systems that yield state-of-the-art performance on massive datasets. Sorry, deep learning gods. Next up is Teapot, or the tree-based pipeline optimization tool. It optimizes pipelines using genetic programming, which is pretty unique. It again extends scikit-learn, but with its own regressor and classifier methods. It then explores thousands of possible pipelines before choosing the best one for your data. The problem is that it can't automatically process natural language inputs, and it's not able to process categorical strings, which have to be integer coded before being passed in as data. But I still like this one a lot. Look at all that GitHub cloud. Also, shout out to H2O. It supports both traditional and deep learning model selection. It uses its own algorithms to build a pipeline and includes feature engineering as well as hyperparameter tuning. 
If you only want to do deep learning, that's a great one. Auto Keras is a great pick because it follows the design of the classic scikit-learn API, so it's simple to use, but uses powerful neural architecture search with the Keras library under the hood to find the best model for the job. Google recently released an entire suite of machine learning products called AutoML in its cloud and uses transfer learning as well as neural architecture search on the back end to do this. The plus is that it provides a pretty simple user interface to train and deploy models based on your own data. The only problem is that it comes with a price tag, which if you can pay, great. If not, consider that there are open source alternatives out there that are free. And last but not least, Uber's Ludwig, a newer framework I actually made a video about a few months ago that aims to automate the entire deep learning pipeline with minimal or no code. It's pretty much just a set of command line arguments you'll be giving it, but it's designed for deep learning, not all machine learning models. So keep that in mind. You'll need lots of data to see good results. Before we talk about my favorites, let's talk about the current limitations of AutoML technology. While it works really well for supervised learning algorithms, that means when our data has labels, we've yet to see it work well for label-less data, also called unsupervised learning. It also doesn't work well for reinforcement learning algorithms, which are used in a time-based environment scenario, like a real-world robot or a game. The only real example I've seen of AutoML in reinforcement learning is AlphaZero, Google's Go Playing AI, that learned how to improve itself by playing against itself. In that way, it automatically learned its own model and hyperparameters. AutoML techniques also still can't handle complex data types. Lastly, it's important to note that as of now, feature engineering hasn't been automated that well. That means the process of choosing what the ideal features to feed to a model for your problem still requires domain knowledge, like knowing what the likely markers for a certain strain of cancer are, or what coordinates in rural areas are likely to have certain mineral deposits. So in conclusion, if I were to pick my top three favorite auto ML frameworks, for deep learning tasks, it's Uber's Ludwig. For traditional machine learning, it's a tie between Teapot and H2O. Thus, there are three things to remember from this episode. AutoML refers to the process of automating some or all parts of the machine learning pipeline. Ludwig, Teapot, and H2O are my top three picks for AutoML frameworks, and DARTS, or Differentiable Architecture Search, is a model selection technique that definitely deserves more study. Link to it will be in the video description.